no matter what news you hear about Brexit, no matter the illusions of progress that the British government has tried to present over the many years, the reality is that nothing's really changed just except that the Brexiteers can't seem to accept reality of, of just what it actually means to leave the European Union because, well, they're living in this, what, uh, as we're going to go into, get into later, this fairy dust fantasy. And they love, they love over the past four years to cry betrayal at every single turn and opportunity. It has been pretty much their, their go-to byword. And now you saw it when Dominic Cummings left, how worried they were about their precious Brexit. And the more and more we come, the more and more we see the realities of this. And they cannot hide too much longer from the realities of this. And sooner or later, as we've often said, Boris Johnson is going to have to betray someone in these negotiations. It's just a question of who, and it's more than likely going to be the Brexiteers. So before we get into this article on this... Uh, please do hit that like and share button. And of course, uh, down below there are links to my Patreon page as well as one of donation link. And thank you very much to the people that do support my channel that way. Your support is very much appreciated. So, let's get into this. So, this comes from The Guardian. And the title is, Boris Johnson will get a deal, but it will be, the be it will be a betrayal of the Brexiteers. So ignore the blustering brinkmanship. There will be a deal between Britain and the EU. This week, next week, or in the final second before the clock strikes 12. This Brexit-crazed government will sign on the line. It needs no crystal ball to foresee a, a, a deal. Though this government is disgraceful and dishonest, it is not certifiably insane, although that is definitely questionable. <laughs> It will not kill off the car industry, manufacturing, farming, finance and fishing. It will not cut off security and police um, relations with Europe. Nor will it want a hard border in Ireland, breaking the Good Friday Agreement. And nor will it uh, want to freeze its friendship with the new US president. Nor leave relations with our nearest neighbours and traders ir irreparably, um, irreparably, irreparably wrecked. So the Faragists, I love that, the Faragists and the hardcore MPs in the European Research Group want the door slammed and will, uh, and will still be seeking the forever unattainable sovereignty phantasm. But for Boris Johnson's Brexit cabinet, this is the moment of truth. Finally, ministers will have to face up to the reality of what they have done. They will struggle to deny their Brexit idea was a lie and never available. For the Brexiteers, Johnson's deal will fail miserably. That is because any deal would always trade some of that sovereignty fairy dust for something more tangible, such as a such as a no massive tariff on British beef. However hard he bluffs and fibs to disguise the inconvenient truth, Johnson will sign a deal that agrees to align with EU standards on working rights, animal welfare, the environment and much else. For any future divergences, there will be an adjudications body which may or may not be the European Court of Justice. Fish will be re uh, reappointed with complexity and transitions that try to uh, shield the hard fact that we took back control of our waters in theory, but uh, gave it up in, in the same prep because there is no fishing industry without the vital EU market to buy more than 70% of our catch. And over 12,000 fisher folk were shamefully exploited as Brexiteer visual aids. Everyone knew that they were destined to be sold down the channel. This is the last bitter cod liver oil pill that the UK negotiators are struggling to swallow, but they will. Law-breaking clauses in the, internet, in the Internal Markets Bill repudiated uh, last year's EU withdrawal agreement will be abandoned. 
the Northern Ireland Protocol will stand, so there will be a border down the Irish Sea with customs posts. That despite Johnson's pleading, there is no question of there being goods uh, uh, checks on goods going from Northern Ireland to Great Britain or Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Those who shout betrayal will be dead right. Everyone who voted for Brexit or for Johnson believing in this magical cake and eat it deal was oven ready will be betrayed. His party manifesto read this. Boris Johnson's New Deal takes the whole country out of the EU as one united kingdom. No Northern Ireland is left out. And watch another crack in the union open under an SNP victory in next May's Holyrood elections. Betrayals, uh, betrayed are any who believe that last year's Tory manifesto unicorn to get Brexit done and we will see the, the pent-up tidal wave of investment in our, into our country. A deal was always inevitable because the rules laid out by Margaret Thatcher's single market are crystal clear. The more you want to trade with the market, the more you must conform to it. Johnson will attempt to uh, attempt to whoops uh, of Waterloo, uh, whoops of Waterloo triumph as he tries to smear lipstick on, of a, on his pig of a deal. The, U, the EU will politely uh, suck lemons though. And Emmanuel Macron may spit back. So here's, the, here's also the verdict from the Office of Budget Responsibility, or the OBR, on the deal. The hidden in the annexes... Oh. Sorry. <laughs> A sort of annoying advert just came up. Uh, where we go. So here's the verdict from the Office of... Uh, budget responsibility or the OBR on the deal. Hidden the annexes and unearthed by Jill, Jill Ruta for UK in a changing Europe, the deal will cause a 4% drop in GDP. Even the pandemic won't hide the Brexit hit to manufacturing and finance as mountains of red tape. This includes 270 million customs declarations as opposed to 55 million just happening now and over 50 50 million new customs agents, new customs ITs, will only go live on the 23rd of December. And rolled holliers have no handbooks. Lorry parks are unfinished. No wonder the Chancellor, Ricky Shunak, was silent on Brexit in his spending review last week. All ministers um, have been forced to look over the no-deal abyss. And that's why they know uh, they face the worst of all worlds. That they will eat their worlds and betrayal will uh, and betray fellow Brexiteers, yet still carpet bomb the the carpet bomb the country's economy. And Labour must hose down uh, hose down victory cheers for this deal with an icy shower of contempt. Naturally, Labour says Labour says it will examine the deal first, but then Keir Starmer must forensically shed. It's several hundred uh, shred. It's several hundred for uh, several hundred pages. Those arguing that voting for it might bring back the red wall seats are fighting the last war. Voting for it on it. Uh, voting for it uh, is is it uh, to its to own it. Voting for it is to own it, and its effects will be painfully clear by the next election. David Cameron backed the Iraq War, and it hums it hamstrung his later attacks on this on its calamitous consequences. And this the shadow Brexit secretary, uh, Starmer, uh, laid out six tests. The key demand was to meet the Tories' pledge to deliver the exact same benefits we get from the single market and customs union. The upcoming upcoming deal will spectacularly fail that test. Voting for it risks Starmer's reputation for straight dealing, the border chaos, shortages on shelves, even medicines delayed for at least over months. <coughs> but the OBR and Bank of England have exposed even deeper damages to come. Looking back, it will seem that an opposition should have opposed it. Abstention is not, is not polamitous on this, but it is the only honourable option. And... There is also the possibility that Johnson's delays might mean that a deal comes too late for Parliament to vote on it. So, at the very least, Labour should not decide how to vote until it sees the bill. And of course, Labour could be obliged to vote for it and save the nation 
uh, if a humiliated Johnson cannot stop his MPs voting it down. But that is unlikely. And to vote for this atrocious deal in any other circumstance would be Starmer's first serious mistake. And there you have it. Um, completely agree. And it's just a matter of when and who Boris betrays. Um, obviously, we're not hearing a lot of buzz about the deal at the moment because, quite frankly, we are being told that it's in the tunnel. And the more we hear about it, the le well, the less we hear about it, the more likely there is to be a deal. Remember, not only have we had um, Dominic Cummings resign, but also his protege, uh, the woman who was uh, tagged to be like his ideal successor for his, his role, also left Downing Street this week, thus adding more fuel to the fire of the Brexiteers worrying about that their man and that their guys in the office are steadily being phased out. So, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, as always, we don't know, but it's more than likely we will get a deal. It's just a question of how big and expansive it will be, but in some way, shape or form, it is going to be a very skinny deal, and this will be incredibly damaging to our economy. So, as always, thanks for watching. Please do hit that like and share button. And of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page as well as a one-off donation link. And as always, we'll see you next time.